Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Cara. Hi, Bear. <laughs> Hi, Cara. Hi, Rye. Hi, Vanessa. <laughs> <laughs> Vanessa, we have very special guests with us today. This is um, becoming a semi-annual tradition, semi meaning every two years. I just made that up. It would be, it would be biannual. <laughs> biannual. <laughs> We have a biannual tradition that we're starting here, although this is my first and last um, swing here because um, we are talking to our kids. We did our firstborns two years ago before they headed off for a year at college, and now we're doing our second born. Now, Rye is my second of two. Bear is your second of four. So maybe... I'll just talk to your other kids alone when we do this on the next round. And and it'll be me sitting here at my desk alone. But but our firstborns, they're classic firstborns. Like anyone who wants to go listen to that episode, you'll you're about to hear a difference because our firstborns are by the book, chatty Kathy. They had a lot to say. I mean, at this point in the introduction, they were already interrupting us and clarifying. And our secondborns are, Vanessa, you want to describe our secondborns? So you can't hear it, but they are both smiling widely, silently, which we'll come back to in a second. They're both braced physically, they're sitting with the same body language where their sort of arms are not aggressively crossed, but hands folded and lapped. They are um, humoring us. This entire exercise is an exercise in two children humoring their mothers. And Kara, I have never seen you this happy in the many years I have known you in the times we have Kids have graduated from high school and we've released books. You are the giddiest I have ever seen you in the whole time of knowing you. And it's basically because you have accomplished the feat of getting Rye and Bear on the podcast. Should we see if they talk? Uh, I've been looking forward to uh, coming on this podcast, um, even though I, have, I haven't been an avid listener over the years. But- Bear, have you ever listened to any episodes of the Puberty Podcast? I've, I've or, listened sorry, to the, this uh, is so awkward. I, I've listened to Samson and Talia's podcast, like when they were on with my friends. Um, that they found out that Samson went on, and they wanted to uh, like listen to Samson on a podcast and see what that was like. Uh, but yeah, this right. episode's going to have big listenership amongst college freshmen this year. That is for sure. Uh, Rai, did you even listen to that episode? No. <laughs> he was waiting for you to ask that question, Cara. Yeah. Right. So, have you ever read a newsletter we have written or a book we have written or watched a social media video we have created? Not on purpose, but I've watched a social media. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, lean into the mic and tell us about how in the world you watched a social media video not on purpose. I remember a while ago, there was one video that my mom made my sister and I film for her that we both were super not interested in filming and it ended up getting like a million views and I got it sent to me probably 500 times and it was so upsetting for me. Uh, I've, I've had this, I've had the same thing happen. It wasn't a, like an ad or anything, but it was, um, we went to the Billy Joel concert last year and we took we took a selfie video of us singing i think piano man or something and it uh got posted on instagram and like my entire school saw it and so i had like <laughs> these juniors who i or i i was a i was a junior they were sophomores they were like all sending it to me like i'm not even that close to them like my whole school saw it um but and then and then there's the ad with zion and ozzy and samson where we couldn't like speak because ozzy kept laughing Oh, the Oom Shorts ad. The Oom Shorts ad, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that also. And so, Rai, the the way you phrase it is, your mom made you film the TikTok. So um, we can revisit the concept of consent later. (laughs) Okay, yeah. (laughs) And for those of you not... It's not on our list of questions. Yeah, it's not not yet, but it will be. And for those of you not 
um, watching this on YouTube, Kara and Rai are in matching Navy outfits. So there was clearly a melding of the mind in the Natterson household. Yes. Rai's oh yeah. slightly horrified by the matchy matchy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But but what's under the sweatshirt would be Rye's rowing outfit. Yeah, I just got home. I yeah. And he found out this was videoed and on YouTube, and he opted to put a matching sweatshirt to mine. I had the sweatshirt in my backpack already. It Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. It wasn't really yes. Clarifying. Clarifying. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So we're gonna start. You guys have the list of questions in front of you, which we just showed you 15 seconds ago. We're gonna start with the general question because you're both second borns what is it like being a second kid because your mom and i car and i are both third of four children i don't know if you both realize that but there's that commonality amongst other things we don't know what it's like to be a second kid what is it like i would say well like being a second kid and then like being a middle kid is i think two different things like i think brian would have something slightly different but like being the second born for me would be like like good and bad things, I would say. Like when Samson messes up, like a lot of his mess ups will then come down on me, whether that will be like a good thing where like you guys are able to help me like not mess up or it might be something that I would would have wanted to do and then I can't do it because you guys are, get stricter on me. Um, but I, I, I kind of like it because like Samson's kind of the spokesperson <laughs> and I can, I can tell you guys and I can kind of like, tell him what I want him to say without actually always having to say it directly to you guys. Right. Does that resonate with you? Any of those comments? I think, yeah, I, I think the mess up thing is definitely true. I also, I think there's been something where whenever we're at dinner as a family, I never really have to talk because it's always <laughs> kind of arguments going on between my parents and my sister. So I kind of just get to not have to, do like like arguments <laughs> like we're into the conversation yeah to be yeah. and, and you just hang back well, i don't really feel like the need to and i feel like kind of the spokesperson things the same thing like i can let talia talk and i'm very happy with that and it works for me how would other people describe you guys like how would someone else describe your personality that's a good um, question. i i would say like since samson's left I, gr growing up, I was very quiet, like very, very quiet. Um, I was like known at dinner, I would say about like one thing every dinner. Um, I'd speak up and it would make everyone laugh. And then I'd kind of just not talk again. But like since <laughs> since Samson's left and like I love Sam, like Samson's like I'm so close to Samson. But like since he's left, I've kind of been able to come out of my shell more, I think. But even though I still think at dinner, Zion and Ozzy kind of command the conversation a lot. Cause they like the conversation to be more about them. I think that, that, like that's being like a second kid and like being like a middle kid. I, I feel like whether it's the oldest or the youngest too, like they command more of the attention. So I kind of get like lost in there sometimes, which again is good and bad. Like I can get away with some stuff that I otherwise wouldn't have been able to do, but I think I'm, I've become a lot more outgoing. I'm pretty, pretty funny. I would say. And yeah. Right. How would people describe you? Well, I think in terms of our family, I think I'm a quieter person. I don't really know people, but like for our family, I know everyone. So I <laughs> talk more, <laughs> but I'm very happy to not talk if I don't have to, which is different than my older sister. I think. Although <laughs> she left and you were the only and that kid. that's yeah so what's that was like? not fun for me because <laughs> I had to talk about things that I normally did not have to talk about with my parents like actually about what is happening at school or things like that that were never really things I needed to think about after school but and you had deeply enjoyed that <laughs> process yeah yeah how, how would your friends describe you? Generally social, not super quiet, not super loud. Yeah. So you've got yeah. your home persona. Same. It's pretty your... similar, but you, yeah. 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 Are you as funny as Bear or are you funny? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, we have, these guys have actually met in person. Rai spent the night with us in between um, college visits and there was a major Xbox 
extravaganza and a dinner table conversation, which seemed particularly peak Bennett in honor of Rye's appearance at our table. I don't even remember what we talked about. I'm pretty yeah. sure blowjobs were somewhere in there. I had a lot of like Ann and Ozzy kind of saying funny stuff at the table like, in front of you, and you're kind of embarrassed because it was like. I think they were trying to impress Rob. Yeah, they they were trying to make yeah. Ozzy. Ozzy was doing like his typical like making everyone laugh, saying crazy shit, saying um, shocking statements. Yeah. yeah. So um, this is not the first time these guys have ever met. It's just the first time they've ever participated in a podcast. So can you share with folks listening what you're each on the cusp of doing in the next couple of weeks? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we're both about to leave for college in the next. Like a couple, two weeks, yeah. Bear's going to college with a couple of your friends. Yeah, yeah. And Bear Bear and I had a really funny exchange about a month ago when um, I, I tried to do the mom fix-up uh, and introduce Bear to your friends because yeah. I think they'll be friends. Yeah. And Bear put his arm around my shoulder and he looked at me and he said, Cara, I am not reaching out <laughs> to those kids. Yeah. No offense, but no one wants the mom fix up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. It, is it one of the best lines? It was it was all in like good spirit. Like I never meant to like offend anyone or anything, but like I feel like when you reach out and you're like, oh, like my mom's good friend and like work like business partner, like wanted me to talk to you like you automatically just I, like seem kind of weird and i i yeah i appreciated the help but i, I was i was good <laughs> so to parents everywhere do not try to do the mom or dad fix up because they're not into it is that fair yeah 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 that's a quick yeah, yeah. right can you spend a minute talking about what it feels like ahead of leaving home for college uh, i'm really excited I think <laughs> clearly no, but, after your experience being left. <laughs> no offense. Um, I'm not really worried about the social aspect of school because I'm going to be on a team when I get there. And I think that having a built in group there already will be make it a lot easier for the beginning. So I'm actually already more thinking about the athletic versus academic balance of everything. I'm more worried about that than they going into a new place, really. So I, I'm I couldn't be more excited though. To leave more excited to leave your mother. That, I guess. <laughs> By the way, for those watching on video, this is Rye elated. Rye, I will say, um, having played a sport in college, although not one as intense as rowing, I used to take a power nap every day before I went to practice, like from three to three fifteen. And it is a practice that I do until this day. It's like the most reviving, amazing. A thing so just and my closest friends some of my closest friends from college are from my team um and i adore them so i'm super excited bear you are not playing a sport in college. I'm, I'm, I'm not playing a sport um so i would say like i'm i'm going to tulane like next uh fall and at like i was on saturday yeah in a couple of days and and it's thursday <laughs> right so I'm, I'm going pretty soon and i uh i would say i'm nervous and but also very very excited because like I'm 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 also not really worried about like the social aspect like I have my brother there um and he's been really helpful but I, like I also met my own kids like that I like and enjoy and um but I would say uh, like finding the balance between like socializing and um having like a good time in college and all that uh, with like work and applying myself and uh growing as a student um that's sort of my answer to like make everyone happy i guess is but, that a genuine answer yeah. no but like yeah like figuring <laughs> out figuring out what uh what work like finding a balance between uh being able to have fun but also um applying myself with a big emphasis on enjoying myself you know one of the reasons we wanted to have you on this podcast was for you to sort of share a little bit of knowledge with all the people who listen, even though neither of you listens to this podcast, it turns out a lot of people listen to this podcast and some of our very most popular episodes are with 
teenagers and young 20-somethings giving some insight into how they think or what they think about because the adults who are raising them and who care about them don't really have a window in except to the kids in their house, right? So um, even though your kid's in our house, you represent to everyone who's listening another voice. So along those lines, I'm wondering if you can talk about something that you've learned about not, maybe it's about Rai, you've learned about me or Bear, you've learned about Vanessa, or maybe it's something you've learned about kind of how raising kids work, like the parenting side of it, that as you've gotten older and now you've one foot out the door on your way to college, kind of surprised you. You know, what's something that in hindsight, maybe you hated as a kid and now you kind of recognize maybe it made sense or something, you know, some some piece of insight you can share with other people. For my parents, something that they did that I really liked that kind of surprised me and I also didn't like at some points was when they would try to help me with things that either they did know a lot about or did not know a lot about. And when they did know a lot about it, it's super helpful because it's all like, I, it's obviously good to have an extra, like help extra set of hands helping you. But then when it's something that they don't really know about, it turns into a thing that doesn't really, I think, help anyone and causes some issues there. And like, I think with school and like writing and everything, I kind of trusted my mom to help me because she does writing a lot. And when it came to like rowing and things, my mom obviously couldn't help me as much. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> and it would, I don't think cause issues, but like it wouldn't be fun for either of us really in that situation. And, and do you have a different sense of why we often inserted ourselves and offered our help now that you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah but yeah. yeah, I think knowing what you do know and don't know is helpful. That's that's pretty <laughs> insightful, actually. And and do you have any advice for parents or grandparents or guardians about how to hear their the kids in their lives when the kids in their lives are saying, "Stop, this is not helpful." Like, h- how can they take that advice? Because I, for one, was not excellent at taking that advice. Right until you got super clear with me and would say, "This is not helpful." So. Is there, do you have any advice there for adults? I don't know. I think, I don't really know if there's a way to do it without messing it up. Yeah. Like that's kind of what happened. Both of us would get mad and then realize every time we'd get better, I guess, after that. But yeah, I don't know if there's a way to avoid it from the beginning. (laughs) Yeah. Because you're obviously trying to help, but like, it doesn't seem like you're trying to help from my perspective. Right. And often it would create, as you said, a thing. Yeah. And the thing occupies time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Bear, what's something you learned as you got older? From like when I was very young, when I was like very quiet and stuff, I think we had very different personalities. And so like as someone who's a lot more introverted, I think it took you a while. And I I remember like the kind of the moment where it clicked because we were in the hotel room or something and she was reading a book about uh, introverts. Um, or different types of kids. And there's a chapter about introverts. And I was honestly just trying to like play on my phone or something. And <laughs> she kept she kept like looking over at me and being like, Bear, does this like sound similar to you? And she would say something about like some research um, that was done in the book and um, about introverts. And it was like, sounded a lot like that for me. And I, I don't, I think that was like the moment where you realize that we were very different people. And that like some of the things that came really easy to you, um, like being clear to other people what you want. Like I took it, it. I always found it harder to like be more like assertive and tell people exactly what I wanted. And that I think each kid is like different in that way. That like I think for Samson, it's very easy for him to tell you <laughs> when you're doing a shitty job or like when you're messing up. Um, but for me, like I I never really liked doing that. Um, but kind of understanding that, like, maybe just because I don't say it outwardly, really angrily at the dinner table or something, um, doesn't mean that you're doing like a, gr- a great no, job. But, like, but, but, but also, but also, like, it took me a while to like 
tell you when I like appreciate something that you're doing. So I think it kind of went both ways with that. Bear, can I ask a related question? What is your most common answer to the question, what would you like for dinner? And the reason I ask, <laughs> you know why I'm asking, because yeah. it goes with your saying you don't always know how to say what you want. And this might be a theme over on the West Coast here. Mm. Yeah. I, well, she's making fun of me because <laughs> whenever she asks what I want for dinner, every time I say, I don't know. But yeah, yeah that's pretty similar actually because i don't know though it's not like i'm like i'm avoiding the answer like <laughs> i think to bear's point like as we get to know ourselves and each other better it, things get easier so like you're embarking on this new chapter in your life and i think you guys are starting to figure out also what you want right I thought the answer was just going to be chipotle well i mean that's the default answer yeah. 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 When, when we order <laughs> in, it's like the surface answer is Chipotle. And then once it's like we got Chipotle two days ago, I I, I don't really know what to what to say. I just you, but when it's like home cooked meals, I, I still don't really know. I, I use it. Well, we had this conversation like last week for my last dinner. But yeah. Oh, yeah. What did you want for your final dinner before we left? Yeah. I do feel like it goes hand in hand with the conversation we had at the top about the firstborn having a lot to say. I feel like whether they know or don't know what they want, they have an opinion. And I do think a little bit as a second kid, you just ride that wave because their opinion is usually, I mean, Talia makes her opinion known. <laughs> and if someone disagrees with her opinion, she'll dig in a little. Right. And I'm usually fine with what she wants for dinner. And there we go. <laughs> right. So that's where it, I think that's a little the birth order of it all. Yeah. Right. Like that's a success strategy since you were a baby. Yeah. So I'm going to change the order here. What is something, Rye, that you wish was different about your mom? Can it, uh, yeah, I'd say probably I, I would have preferred if she hadn't chose to be our elementary school sex ed teacher. Um, <laughs> fair I, enough. Yeah. That's fair that's, that's, enough. I will take that yeah. one. I did not know what was coming, yeah. but I will take that one. Yeah, that didn't require any equivocating, right? You could have just come out and said that one and everyone <laughs> listening would totally appreciate it. I thought it was going to be that you're, you know, you you wish I wasn't so sensitive to what, you say because you were sensing my sensitivity to the question as you were beginning to answer it. So, so there you go. But I'll I'll take that. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I yeah. taught you sex ed. All good. Sorry, not sorry. Okay. It's a try. It's a really useful joke that your mom makes, though, at every keynote we give. So thank you for sacrificing yeah. yourself on the yeah. altar. I, it was yeah, more Talia than me, honestly. She. The girls had to hear her for more than more than I did. So I think it was more of a scarring experience. Yeah. And her. and the joke goes something like this when we speak. It's my kid is so mad at me because of whatever. And I'm like, you think you embarrassed your kid by doing this? Let me just tell you what I did to my kids. I taught them sex ed in their classroom and everyone collectively gasps. And then it's not so bad for the other parents. <laughs> for the other parents. Yeah, yeah. For the other parents. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Bear, what do you wish was different about me? I can take it. I, I'm I'm trying to think like, I don't know. If I'm being honest, there's sometimes where she's just like annoying. But I, I think that's every mom. Like you're automatically going to be annoying. Oh, is dad not annoying? I think that dad is really annoying. <laughs> um, but <laughs> but I think don't worry, he won't listen to this episode. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, he's really like he's also really annoying. I think everyone's annoying, but like I, I think. With your personality and my personality, like combined, I think there's times where it's very overwhelming, like because you're this like huge personality and all this stuff. But you're also my mom, so you kind of have to like let it happen, like but because well, because my my, si my sister also has a huge personality, and there's times where like she's being really annoying. I can just be like shut up, like <laughs> being really annoying right now. I would never turn to my mom who does a lot for me like and be like you're being really annoying like shut up <laughs> so you're doing it right now for all the times <laughs> yeah no i'm getting it all out right okay, yeah but um that that's probably what it'd be i, I wouldn't really be able to choose like one thing in particular because there's, <laughs> there's, there's too much for me to 
No. What's the most annoying thing that I do? To preface it, I'm a like hygienic person. Like I take <laughs> I take two showers a day. Like I brush my teeth, all that stuff. My room is very messy. I get it from my dad. Like I'm fine <laughs> with it being very messy. Like my clothes will be on the floor, all that stuff. Like, but there will be times where she just like comes in, and it feels like you're just invading my space, and you start folding up random stuff. <laughs> Right. That is a million times better than what. Sorry. Do you feel seen and validated? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I I'm the same do, way. Do I, you want to do an impression of what I sound like? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you, I'll, I'll be lying in bed like. He's normally napping. Just to be clear, I, I'm I'm a big. He's uh, yeah, power big, napping. Yeah, not uh, not really, but <laughs> I will be in bed like minding my own business. I'm having a great <laughs> afternoon, like. And then she comes in. I just hear like bear from like a mile away echoing through the halls. And she comes in and she just looks everywhere and she doesn't even have to say anything. And I like know what's coming. And she just like starts like working herself up as she like folds clothes. And I'm like, mom, like, I don't care. It's like fine if the clothes are like on the floor, but it means a lot to you. So that that's pretty annoying. And also you don't change. <laughs> What I change? What you no, no, but you change your clothes. You don't change like you know it's important to me, and also you oh, don't do anything oh, yeah. about it. Oh, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I thought you're talking about my clothes. Um, but I, uh, yeah. Well, that's that's kind of where I'm at in life right now. Fair point, Rye. Do you have any comments on the topic? <laughs> yeah, I a couple of weeks ago, I my room is ten tends to be the same way. It's not as clean as my mom would like it to be, and I got home from seeing my friends like <laughs> at like 11 or 12 or something. And I say goodnight to my parents and they both say goodnight. And I get walk into my room and everything's still where it was. I'm about to get in bed. And there's a note on my bed that's like, do better. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. I'm like, what? Like you just said goodnight to me. And then I see this and I like. <laughs> it was it was a really stealth move. It's like the first time I'd ever done that. Yeah. But was it I, signed anonymous well, obviously i knew who had written it well that wasn't i didn't even uh, yeah <laughs> i also might have tethered it to the allowance that you were getting yeah yeah i too. might have done that i've I might done have that said, i've yeah. done that but to to kids everywhere i will say the reason why we care about how your space is kept well for me there are two halves one is It's respectful to the people with whom you share a home and the people who buy you these clothes and all that to take good care of them. And the second is, I am a firm believer that if your space is chaotic, your brain is chaotic. Now, there are three other people who live in our house who seem to have different opinions on this. And there are only four people who live in our house. So I understand I am the outlier there, but that is why, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cara, I love how you've given taken the opportunity to use this podcast recording as yet another chance to hammer home why Ryan needs to leave. (laughs) Okay. So we've talked about what's you'd like to change or you wish was different or is annoying about us. Um, What is something you love and appreciate about us? It's tough. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I think there's a very long pause. <laughs> well, no, like <laughs> I um, well, I would say I love and appreciate like your willingness to. This is something that you've grown a muscle to. I think um, like willing to change and accepting when you're wrong. Like I think when you're younger, like you're very used to being like very good at everything and being very smart and being right a lot, but you've learned how to like know when you've kind of messed up and accept that and like own it. Um, I remember like eight years ago, you were writing for like the Huffington post or something about like when dad went away and you were going to make it a great weekend. And it was a really terrible weekend because like <laughs> you try to like take us to a museum or something and it just didn't work out. Um, Cause which boys want to go to a museum, but um, that, which is okay but to all the listeners. Like if you do want to go to a museum, <laughs> but, um, like it, it wasn't for me and then but like learning when you've messed up and i think you've grown a lot in that and that's that's one thing that i love about you 
Thank you. Of course. That's like the nicest thing anyone's ever said about me. Rye, the bar is high here. Okay, yeah. I think I love and appreciate that my mom cares about everything. Like, even if my room is super messy and she gets mad at me for it, it's because she cares. It's not like a, I'm mad at you because, well, I mean, that also she is mad at me for it. But like, for a reason at least, which I really appreciate, which I think is very nice. That's so nice. I do care. Thank you for seeing me. So now don't get mad at me, Nick. (laughs) I'm going to ask one specific question and then we're going to go to a a broader question. But since you guys went through the college process, which is very stressful for kids and parents, do you have any advice for people listening? And this could be something we did or didn't do or wish we did. Do you have advice? for parents who are about to embark on it or have high schoolers who are really stressed about it for something they could do to support their kid through the process? I would say like, be very aware of like who your kid is and what they enjoy and like what type of things they enjoy. I think for a lot of people, it's like a a lot of it is about just reaching as high as possible, um, which is good. Like reaching as high as possible is good, but like there's certain times where like in doing that you kind of lose what your kid would actually thrive like what situation your kid would actually thrive in and i think i've seen kids that like try to do that and end up hating their school um because they were just like unrealistic about who they are um so being honest to yourself and to your kid i think as someone who like it didn't always come very easily being honest with your kid like about who they are as a student and who they are as a kid like because you don't want to let them just like convince themselves they're going to like the greatest school ever or whatever um i am very happy to be going to tulane by the way like i did ed and all that but like like i think not you you did a great job of this but like i think other kids are kind of convinced themselves they're going like here when they're like really not at that level what advice do you have i have two different things one of them is last summer, my parents told me I had to finish all my essays by the end of the summer. And that expectation was like crazy, but it at least got me to finish my main essay because I thought I was doing less than they wanted, but it was still like enough. And I think if they had told me just to write my main essay, I wouldn't have started it until after the summer. So I think telling your kids to do more than they can actually do, they'll do more than they would have done if you told them to do the right amount it kind of worked Mm -hmm. yeah and the other thing is i'd say kind of on the same page as bear it's all kind of random too like if you even if you think you deserve something you're like you're as smart as someone who's going to college here it's all kind of random which sucks there's never a way to know what to expect from it really do you think kids appreciate that more than parents sometimes and the parents need to just recognize the that it's a little bit your bingo ball gets called to yeah. get into these schools. Yeah, like at the end of this year, I remember talking to some people who were like, wait, and like this person's going to college here and I'm not? Like that's so, I, like mm-hmm. it's all, yeah. Yeah. I was thinking it's like important not to look as much at like what other kids are doing compared to like what you're doing and just like appreciate what, like where you're going or what you're doing. Um, Which I also think kids are sometimes better at than their parents, right? I think that's fair. Yeah. Can um, I can I land on one last question? Because I know you guys are ready to go to college and bear you're basically like putting the <laughs> bags in the car in five minutes. How are our homes going to be different without you? And I guess I'm asking a personal question about you, but for anyone who's listening, whose kid is leaving for boarding school, for college, for a job, for travel abroad, like how do you, have you ever thought about how the house is going to change and, and I don't know, do you have any wisdom to impart there or do you have any appreciation of how much it's going to change? I've been made pretty aware of how the house <laughs> is going to change. Well, for one thing, like I drove my brother and sister to school every day and like now they're going to have to take the bus, which is like <laughs> a huge deal for them because they have to wake up like 30 minutes earlier. But what I would say about myself, like not to toot my own horn, but toot it, baby. I think I'm by far the chillest kid in the house um, and everyone else is like, can be pretty like annoying to each other and just in general. And I think 
without me, especially for Zion and Ozzy, like I play a role of like peacekeeper because they get in arguments sometimes, which is like fair. But um, I think without me, they'll, they're going to have to like learn how to deal with it themselves. And I think even though I don't talk that much at dinner, like what I do say might be missed a little bit. And it might be like a lot of just people talking um, over each other, over each other. Yeah. Sure. What do you so, think dad and I are going to miss about you? I think you'll probably miss like, like I said, like my energy is kind of different to my siblings. So it's like, it's kind of a change in, in personality, I guess. Um, so you'll miss that. Like it's a different type of like kid and Zion and Ozzy are like different, but they're, I would say more similar um, to each other than like I am. Um, so I think you'll miss that. Right. What about you? I mean, because I'm the last kid, <laughs> I think there'll be more change than there. I am getting ready to cry right now. But I don't know. I still think like I only really saw my parents at home for like 45 minutes to an hour a night just because I'm doing eating dinner with them when I get home from practice and then doing homework. So I think it won't be that different realistically because I'll just call them and it, I, I think it'll you will uh yeah I, I will <laughs> you heard uh, it here first folks record it yeah but I think it'll be more similar than you think I think but I mean you and dad are so similar that I mean you're really carbon copies of each other so I even though there aren't going to be two of you around anymore I still get that version yeah 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 it really is a two against. And they're going to be on the East Coast a lot in the fall, right? Like, a yeah. lot. I know. <laughs> yeah. He um, says excitedly. He says with an eyebrow, right? <laughs> um, Cara, can we finish with saying what we're going to miss about each of them? Is that a good place to land? I love that. Do you want to go first or are you trying to keep the tears at bay? <laughs> you go first. <laughs> okay. So. I feel like I've just gotten good at parenting you. Like, I finally get you. I'm going to hold the mic so I can look at you. I feel like I finally get you. So as Bear's alluded to, I'm a mega extrovert. And Bear is a, I would say, a mediated introvert. He's actually very social and very funny, but quieter and mellower. And it took me many, many, many years to figure out how to be like, I think a really good parent to you. And I'm annoyed because now you're leaving just when I got good at it. And I wish I had more time with you at home where I was like a black belt in parenting there. But now knowing as I do that, even though when you go leave home for college, you don't actually leave home. Like I still have a lot of work to do. I'm excited to apply that to a new setting, but I'm like a little bit like I'm not ready for you to leave yet because I feel like I have just gotten good at understanding you and someone who's really, really different than I am. Oh, beautiful. I'm so, getting teary. So spry. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Um, I am going to miss everything about you. Thank Everything, you. yeah, even the mess because there's gonna be no one to no one to yell no at one to yell at. No, it's fine. I might have to go into your room and mess it up occasionally <laughs> so that it feels like um, I'm gonna miss everything about you. I think I will miss the most having one person who I can count on to listen to everything that is being said. Doesn't matter if it's just our nuclear family, if it's a huge group of people, you're a listener and you're a sponge. And then when you do open your mouth and say something, it's like a mic drop moment You most of the time where it's either really funny or it's just like you just nail it and you boil everything down that everyone's been spending an hour talking about. You get it in a line. And there isn't anyone else in our family or in my immediate life who does Dad, it as well. Dad, Dad, Dad does it well. Dad does well. You do it better. You're like version 2.0. That's also recorded. Yeah, that's recorded. But he won't <laughs> listen, so we're okay. Um, so that's what I'll miss the most, I think. 
um, in terms of the dynamic. The actual physical thing I'll miss the most, and I do talk about this on the podcast from time to time, so you may have heard this before, but I will miss the way you and I learned to connect when you were younger and really, really quiet. The way we learned to connect was sometimes I would remember when you're much younger, I would sit outside your door and I would be like telling you I'm just outside the door. And then I would come in and I'd lay on your bed and I still do this. You'll be sitting at your desk and I'll lay on your bed and I'll just look at the ceiling. And that's where we tend yeah. to have our best conversations. And that, like, that's what's making me teary because that's what I'm going to miss. Yeah. So she's going to come to your dorm room and, <laughs> and lay on your bed. Yeah. After a few minutes. I'm sure my roommate will be really, really happy. <laughs> You're like, dude, bro, what is she doing here? <laughs> I just want to appreciate that this wasn't necessarily in either of your comfort zones. And you did this for us because it made us really, really happy. And just like we've done a million things for you, you did this for us and we really appreciate it. And I have no doubt that the people listening will appreciate your honesty and the ways in which we are just as annoying to you as those folks out there are to their children. So maybe that makes people feel good, but also that the insight that you shared about what this process is like is really important for adults to hear because it can be super lonely to be a parent of a teenager. Obviously not you guys, because we never feel alone when we're with you two chatterbox. <laughs> but I think you're proof positive that quiet kids do emerge out the other end and have a lot to say. And um, one thing you've both been very good at teaching each of us is how we can shut up and listen. And it allows space and room for you to speak. And that is something that we share a lot in a lot of our writing and teaching and speaking. And that lesson was taught to each of us by each of you. Thank you. So so we're going to shut up now. So good luck, boys. Have fun in college. Thank you. Make good choices. Yeah. What does dad say? Um, Make good decisions. Make good decisions. Um, Godspeed. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks for listening. Love you. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. You can email us with questions, feedback, or episode requests at podcast at lessawkward.com. If you want to learn more about what we do to make this whole stage of life less awkward for everyone involved, our parent membership, our school health ed curriculum, our keynote talks, and more are all at lessawkward.com. And if you want products that make puberty so much more comfortable, visit myoomla.com. <laughs>